Although it's not completely finished yet, I thought people might be interested to see a short video of how my Isle of Wight layout is progressing. We'll end up at Ventnor, but we'll begin at Shanklin. Here we see a shot showing the road bridge on the main road between Shanklin and Sandown. And if we look across, we can see that the Shanklin signalman has already cleared the home signal for a train to arrive. Panning round, we see the station yard, which has still got to have some scenic details added to it. And then we see the station with a train from Ventnor having already arrived. The loco heading the train from Ventnor is number 27 Merstone, one of the O2s that I remember seeing many times during family holidays in the island in 1965 and 66. She's hauling a six coach set headed by a rebuilt SEC brake. All of the coaches that you're going to see have been rebuilt by me from Triangular Estuaries. In the dock is a Southern Railway PMV. There were several of these on the island, being the most up-to-date stock that the island ever got in steam, latter steam days. Looking across Shanklin, we see the train waiting in the up platform. The very distinctive signal box standing above the upside buildings, which still has to have its interior detail fitted and in the foreground, the main station building. Then we swing round, looking towards the end of the station, where the line leads off to Ventnor. We'll see this end of the station in more detail shortly. Here's a view outside the station, where I've taken the liberty of bringing rather a lot of Southern Vectis buses up, um, there's quite a lot of nice uh, 1950s, 60s Southern Vectis models available from the various bus model uh, suppliers and so I decided that these would be rather a nice uh, feature to uh, add to the layout. Uh, the open topper there, um, that's commercially available as an open topper um, and in fact is a, a, an AEC Regent which the um, Southern Vectis bought second hand from Brighton and Hove. Um, the Bristol open topper here uh, is one that I've modified from a, a base toys a model of a Bristol K type utility bus and uh, is the type of open topper that uh, I was much more familiar with. Right I've removed the, uh, the buses uh, to give you a better look at uh, my battle with the station building at Shanklin. Um, during the whole process I've not been able to get hold of any proper plans of any of the buildings that I've made. Um, so everything has been scaled from uh, looking at various photographs. Um, so none of them are uh, claimed to be 100% accurate but I think they do um, portray Shanklin very much as it was in the days when I remember the steam trains. Uh, the Roxall end of the layout I've used a little bit of modeller's license and uh, created another uh, a parking area for buses and coaches. Um, and this has allowed me to effectively display the rest of the Southern Vectis models um, of course in the 1960s when the steam trains were running the uh, workhorse of the Southern Vectis fleet was very much the Bristol Low Decker and uh, there are several of these around the layout. You can see one park there uh, in the middle. Uh, we look across uh, you can see the starting signal going towards uh, taking the single line towards Roxall. And then we swing round and uh, as well as bringing back Isle of Wight steam trains I've brought back another 
uh, landmark building that was outside the station, the Marine Hotel. Uh, this was uh, demolished some years ago and the site's now uh, occupied by an apartment block but it was quite a distinctive building. Again, it's been modelled from very scanty photographic evidence so uh, once again is not uh, guaranteed to be 100% accurate um, but it uh, does fill a space on the uh, lifting section. The uh, single line passes round the back of the building and uh, there you can see uh, in anticipation there's a mother and uh, a couple of lads standing by the fence in anticipation of the arrival of a train. If I pan across the uh, Marine Hotel and come round you can see the uh, the home signal for uh, Shanklin. Um, I modelled all of the signals um, myself from uh, ratio kits apart from the uh, bracketed home signal um, for Shanklin and the bracketed start of Ventnor. Uh, these were modelled for me by Stephen from Borgerail and uh, if you want some nice bespoke semaphore signals for your railway then uh, uh, Stephen is the man I recommend. He'll do you anything, um, motorised signals, signals with lamps in, uh, at quite uh, reasonable prices. Right, just as we have at the uh, Sandown end of Shanklin, I've used the road bridge um, as a scenic break here. This represents the bridge on uh, Victoria Avenue, the main road taking uh, traffic out from uh, Shanklin through God's Hill towards Newport. And uh, you can see the bridge there and the distant for Shanklin Station. The distant wasn't actually here, it was, it was further in, but uh, I thought it would make a nice, a nice feature to model. Um, and then basically we have a scenic section here um, which represents part of the uh, climb out of Shanklin and uh, up Apps Bank towards Roxall. Um, there's a little, uh, little occupation crossing there again. Um, this time we've got a father and a couple of lads at the gates wondering when there's a train going to approach. Uh, I didn't have room to model Roxall so from this point the line heads through the cutting and up into the northern portal of Ventnor Tunnel and uh, there you can see the uh, the distance signal for Ventnor. And so we come to Ventnor itself. Um, those of you who know anything about the Isle of Wight Railways know that uh, Ventnor Station was uh, accommodated in a very unusual location in, uh, in an old chalk quarry. Um, so the chalk cliffs were very much um, part of the atmosphere of uh, Ventnor Station. Um, a train has arrived and uh, we'll see that in a minute. Looking across to the coal yard, of course even in those days, even in the summer, there was uh, still a reasonably buoyant um, demand for coal because uh, it used to be sold at cheap prices in the summer so uh, coal traffic would still be uh, are coming and going. Here's a more panoramic view across uh, Ventnor and in fact there's a coal train present. Um, we have locomotive uh, number 17 Sea View um, has brought a train through from uh, Ride 
uh, the coal used to come into the island at Medina Wharf, um, mostly for loco purposes, but of course quite a lot of domestic coal was still used in the 60s. Um, so there's a coal train here and uh, Seaview will start shunting shortly. Moving across towards the station throat, uh, we see locomotive number 14 Fishbourne. She's just brought in a train and is standing uh, at the water column. Uh, when she was in service, she was the oldest engine on BR, having been built in 1889. And on the 31st of December 1966, she hauled the last BR steam passenger train out of Shanklin. If I pan round, again I've uh, introduced one or two buses. Uh, Bristol low decker there on a service to uh, Black Gang. And uh, behind it, um, the very famous single deck Bedford OB. And if you look at the buildings, um, there was a very distinctive sign outside uh, Ventnor Station that I managed to get replicated. And there we go down the side of the single storey station to the uh, very distinctive goods shed which apparently was built um, out of stone that was excavated from the tunnel. Um, by the date that I'm modelling there was uh, not much activity at the goods shed um, but the associated siding um, adjacent to the platform was usually used for stabling uh, some vehicles, um, often a PMV and also um, there were some Chatham coaches that were rebuilt on the island as full brakes and uh, one can be seen lurking inside the shed there uh, but if I move across the station to the siding where some spare coaches are stabled uh, you can actually see um, one of the full brakes there again uh, converted by me from uh, uh, triangular estuaries and a couple of spare coaches most of the uh, trains on the island ran as fixed sets usually six coaches in the summer on the uh, Ride Ventnor line and full coach on the Ride Cows line, um, but there were a number of loose coaches that could be used for strengthening if uh, if required. And uh, having mentioned uh, Borg Rail, I just thought I'd show you a nice close up of the uh, the bracketed starting signal that uh, Stephen made um, for me for Ventnor. As I say, he did the. Uh, the down home bracket for Shanklin as well and uh, he does make an excellent job and they come all painted already um, as I say he'll motorise them he'll put lamps in if you want uh, so if you want some really good looking signals for your layout and uh, that you can't make yourself he's the man to go to so that's about it for the moment um, the layout isn't running as yet. Um, I'm hoping to use the um, proto cab system where you don't need to uh, wire the track. Um, I'm just waiting to see if the people developing it can make their bits small enough to go into an O2. Um, I've got to provide point and signal control. Um, uh, visually uh, Ventnor is actually complete, but there is still some detailing to be uh, to be done on Shanklin. So uh, once it's all finished and running, uh, we might do another video, but uh, that won't be any day soon. Thanks for watching.